Okay, so I was finishing up um, the, the material portion of that ice flow and it occurred to me that I'd like to make a video about this one little trick which I normally have only used to make multi, you know, the color masks for multi-material blends, but it occurred to me I could also use it for grayscale, which is what I was doing here. And we're going to use the gradient map to set up a variety of different height zones. And while we're at it, we might as well learn how to make a, a color mask too. In fact, we'll start with that. It's just, for me, it's just easier to conceptualize that. Uh, Rather than building anything new, you know, we're just going to be studying the method. So I'm going to just take my little group of things here and we're going to go ahead and make a new substance. Uh, we can call this um, gradient map test. And that's fine. We'll just leave it at that. We're not really making a material. Let's see if that pastes now. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, let's get a gradient map. And we can go ahead and plug this in just so it's a little bit easier to visualize. Maybe not quite so shiny. Oh, I thought I changed the color. Sorry. Okay. And I'll bump up the resolution too. So this is the results of the effects map, which I'm not sure if this is the exact same one that we built together, but it's, you know, that, that was that tutorial. I think I modified it. I changed it a little bit. Um, but what I wanted to do initially, I was going to make a color map uh, because I wanted to use a multi-material blend, which I ended up not doing. But then I got the idea that I could also apply it to grayscale. So let's start with the a map a mask rather, I think they call it a color mask, uh, for making multi-material blends. Because when you make a multi-material blend, each material needs to have its own specific color. And with something like this effects map, you wouldn't be able to do it unless you converted this to color, which is exactly what we're going to do. So we can pick random colors that are easy to see. So my black areas, I'm going to go ahead and use, that's why I wanted to, it up here because this way I can kind of look at both things, both results at the same time. Oh gosh. All right, let's try that again. All right. So I want now to define this black. So I'm going to just click another one here and then whatever my next color is here, I'm going to assign it another sort of bold. Oh, first I make a new point and then I do that. Okay. So now I've got this very, and, and I'm going to keep those lines sharp. Remember wh when you're doing a color mask, it's, it's not going to blend them according to in other words, if you have one material here that you've assigned blue to and you've had an, and you have another material here that you've assigned red to, uh, that if you let this sort of blend and, and have a gradient in between, it's not going to do that to your materials. It's going to find an arbitrary point um, and it's going to give you a straight ugly line. So these have to be kind of exact spots. You know, if you want to blur the materials, you do it later on after you've blended in the in the multi-material blend. So I'm going to refer back to my edges here, and I can actually see I can actually see it right there. So I'm going to grab these two because that's my deepest black there, and I can start moving this up now until I find the edge of where I want that to be. So that that's pretty good. So that's area number one. Then I again I'm gonna click on this field right I want the exact same color so I'm gonna get on as close as I can on top of that original color and now I've made a second bracket. 
So now I have this color here and I can pick, after I make a new point, I can pick a third color. All right. So now we are looking for this area in here. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. As I drag these up, it's beginning, you know, and again, this is how you want, you know, you decide how you want your map to look. And that's why I like doing this uh, in color first. I mean, that's, this was the first time I ever did a grayscale. This is why, this is a great way of doing um, color masks and then you can, once you've made the color mask, it's very easy to visualize it as you're doing it because you've got all these bold colors. And then we're just going to switch them out later on. So that's my green, I think pretty good. We're going to get another green, make a little bracket, and then find our third color. Oh, I did it again, didn't I? Let's make another one and then our yellow. And again, I'm just going to drag this up until it's giving me the areas that I want in that group. Okay, and then I think we're going to have one more after this. And what color we purple. Oh, you know what? I'm going to make, because this is our last one, I'm going to get rid of this white one, and that'll be our final color. There. So we've now made this color mask that, that corresponds pretty darn well to the gray areas in here. So if we were using a multi-material blend, uh, we could just go ahead, uh, multi-material blend, Uh, we could go ahead and use this and then we could bring materials into whatever thing we're making and they would then be assigned by these colors. So for example, a single click on that, so material two, so that's this one up here. Um, Let's make that the blue, so I can just pick that blue, and then if I, let's for now we'll just use colors. So I'll have just a black and a, I want completely different colors. This is black and this is red. So we have, this is material two, this is material one. So now, are you? It has picked out that blue color. It has assigned it to this and everything else. This is the background. So whatever you, whatever material one is, it's going to be your background. You don't assign a color to it. Uh, and then it will just give it that. So, you know, you can go ahead and add another material to it. and we could give that a different color and come back into our multi-material blend. Should double click on that first. And let's say we just want material three to be, I know that yellow color. So now that blue is showing up in those areas that were yellow on the mask. 
And, that, and that's how those work. It, it's pretty straightforward and, it, and it's kind of cool. What you can also do, I'm just going to go ahead now, once I've got this color map made, and it's corresponding to all my various areas, whether I'm going to use them or not, but I'm, I'm just breaking it up into, into the chunks that it could potentially, that I might potentially want to use. Once I've done that, I can just copy this and I'm going to make another one. And now, if I get into that particular gradient editor, let's say I want to make a mask for a grayscale that just corresponds to this blue. Well, that means that what I, what I have blue here, I'm going to want white. So I just change it to white. Everything else. Actually, let's change this for everything else is going to be black. So those two, we actually want to change. There's nothing to erase. And then I'm going to do the first one and the last one. And then just get rid of these guys in the middle. And now, look, I've got a grayscale map. And then the other nice thing about using the gradient for this, although the color masks, you kind of you're kind of obliged to have those. You're kind of obliged to have these sharp edges because it, it really doesn't understand anything other than that. The the grayscale mask, you can start to use gradients, and you know here we are, we're we're in gradient country. So I can now start to very very easily manipulate my grayscale mask and I've always got a copy of this color one sitting here and in fact a little trick that I do I use clean a lot up here and if if something's not attached to the chain that comes to the output it's gonna wipe it out and I don't want to wipe this out, but I don't want to use it like at, for my actual color either. So what I often do is I'll just make an output node. I won't, I won't assign anything to it. I'll just give it a name like temp or something. And then I can hook this up to there. So it's not, it's not blocking up my color and it won't read. In other words, it's going to show up. It's called a. It'll show up as a ghost node. So it, it it knows that there's a node there, but it doesn't know what to do with it, and it's like blocked out red, and you can't use it. But I don't care because you know I'm just using it to prevent things from erasing. And that's about it. But you can go ahead and continue to make copies of these. So you know, let's say now I want to, you know, I want to deal. I want to make a mask for something else on here. So I can go ahead and just do the same method. Because I've got this copy, I already know what colors correspond to what zone. And it takes exactly two seconds to make a mask for anything you desire that you can then again go ahead and manipulate to, you know, how you need it. And that's it. So I hope that's helpful.